Welcome back, boys and girls, to Tom's Garage, a very, very busy garage. Uh, today, I promised a customer I would do a video on how to service his lawnmower to save him money. He's a young guy. He is uh, doing it for himself. Uh, he spent a lot of money. I talked him into getting it. I'm proud of that. Uh, I think I'll show you what it is. Y'all hang in there. Woo! Busy, busy, busy shop. Look at all that. Good grief. And working on just a few things in here. I got a house full. Uh, today we are going to do a 10 hour service on this Skag 36 Hydro Walk Behind Hero. Boy, that is a pretty machine. He said that he got this brand new on clearance for $5,700. Boy, that is nice. Kawasaki V Twin. Look at that. He even went to the dealership and got himself the oil and filter he needs. So really, this video is for him to, uh, to show him how to do things. Uh, save him some money. That way he don't have to count on anybody else to help him out. Boy, don't that purdy right there. Mm -mm -mm. Sharpen the blades, change the oil. I've already had it running for a minute. I cranked it up to drive it up on the table. I got the oil just a little warm, and uh, we are going to... Do it to it, fellas. Skag 36 Hero Hydro Walk Behind. Let's take a look at this thing. This is nice. This is nice, nice. You know, one thing I noticed was the front tires. These things are solid, which is awesome. Uh, they've got the grease fittings and the bolts there. Make sure your bolts stay tight. Those are lock nuts, but they can come loose. I know somebody that lost one the other day. Uh, you got your grease fitting and the spindle. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to pull this cover off, check the belts, check everything in there real good. Uh, looking under it, see if I can get over here and look under this thing here. Pardon me, pardon me. Excuse me, excuse me. Uh, let's look under there. The blades look pretty good. Like I said, it's only got 12 hours on it. Uh, let's see. Let's get a look under there. I see over there, he's already got something wrapped around his spindle. Anyway. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. And, look at this thing spun around, right? Let's see. Let's take a look at the front of this thing. One thing I did notice. Look at there. Made in the USA, right there in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. Shoot, I like that. I like that. And... What I usually do is I usually use my vacuum pump to suck the oil out. I've already got the engine warm to the touch, which is what you really need to do. Get all that gooky stuff in there suspended in the oil. I'm just going to run it, pull it right out of the dipstick tube. Uh, the oil filter, one thing I do like about the Kawasaki brand oil filters is they've got like a rough texture. You can grab a hold of them even when your hands are oily. That's nice. Part number for the Kawasaki... 490650721 and this is a FS481V uh, but one thing I did notice on this drain right here you've got a tube you loosen this and it will allow the oil to come out and go down that tube I don't know if I can get under there to see it but the tube runs under there you could put a pan under the frame and catch that oil but when you take that oil filter off, my God, you're going to make a heck of a mess. I'm going to try my favorite little trick. Jeremy at Miller Medic One taught me that. He showed me how to make one of those. And I can take my favorite carburetor cleaning pan. It's low profile. I can kind of, I'm going to wash this thing off anyway for him, but I'm going to try to keep making a dang mess. Uh, so I'm going to start by pulling this cover off and see if I can, looking under it, I didn't see any grease fittings for the spindle, blade spindles. Uh, the only... Grease fittings I see so far are on the front casters and spindles. Uh, see, let's get busy, guys. Let's get this done. I got a lot to do. All right, guys. First thing I'll do is start sucking the oil out of this thing. Sucking the oil, sucking the oil. Y'all probably seen this thing right here before. I got this at Northern Tool for like 60 bucks. This is pretty neat. I like that, man. It really comes in handy. Comes in handy. Stick it in there. You fill it bottom out. 
Give it about the oil pump. If the, if the oil's warm, it'll pull it out pretty quick. If it's cold, it's thick. And it'll take a while, but that shouldn't take just a few minutes right there. Oh boy. I like that too. This is the hydro pump uh, drive motor release pin. You got one on each side in case something happens. You can move these pins and it'll free well. Really accessible right there. I like that. Oh, let's see if we can keep from making a dang mess right here. Let's see. Let me break it loose. Sometimes I can get it loose by hand. Yep, there we go. Okay. Gonna start spewing. Gonna start spewing. Get it way up under there. Way under there. There she goes. She's just spewing. And I'm still making a mess because it's missing the pan. Son of a gun. Yeah, ain't nothing you can do but make a damn mess sometimes. that man it's got a coarse paint job almost like a battle liner material okay there's that make sure your old gasket didn't stick to the engine block like it can sometimes a little oil on that we get that out of the way now Don't cross thread that bad boy. I used to have a bad habit of over tightening them oil filters, man. You got to get out of that habit. They don't need to be so damn tight. You can't get them off. Watch me dump this out. Come on, baby. Yeah, buddy, I made a hell of a mess right there. Golly, that's going to rip down on top of the. PTO clutch. It is. It is, and it did. I gotta hose that thing off real damn good. Okay. I like to spin it where you can get the part number and bring it up so you can see it. There we go. That's not too awful tight. Not too awful tight. I always like to write the date on there. What's today? The Saturday the 4th or is it the 5th? Saturday the 4th. Get you a paint pen. I use that a lot. 6, 4, Twenty-two. and it's hot. I cut the fans and everything off so y'all can hear me better. But I'm about to start roasting. I even put a shirt on. Trail that damn out of there. She's still pumping away. You can't pump these things too much, man. This can will actually implode on itself. And that is not good. Yeah, I can feel it. It's pretty warm. That's good. Usually if the oil is really, really black and hadn't been changed in a long time, I'll get it warm and I will drain it from the very bottom. Because if you don't and you put fresh oil in it, the fresh oil is going to look real dark. And then the customer, you didn't change my oil. Well, hell yeah, man. And this oil for Kawasaki, uh, 2050... It is a synthetic blend, and it contains zinc. Oh, Roosty's going to love that. Look at there. Kawasaki brand. And the dealer says, okay, you're going to need two quarts. So you get exactly what you need. You get main brand stuff. You get the amount you need. She's a slurping. She's slurping. Come on, baby. I'm going to change that fuel filter, too. And i got something else to show you I'm going to do to this thing. It's pretty neat. If you guys like the right brand stuff. Let's 
Slurpy Slurpy. Can you hear it slurping? I'd say she's pretty empty there. Well, that's good enough for me. That is good enough for me. Get this out of the way. Man, my thermometer says it's already 89 degrees in here and it's about 11 o'clock in the morning. Wow. Let me grab a funnel. I will damn sure make a mess of that new hole. I won't do that. We're going to find out exactly the amount this FS481 is going to take. I'm going to go ahead and pour this first port in there slowly. Slowly. I went to the auto parts store yesterday and got two quarts customer on that uh, Arians he, on his 20 horse Briggs Intec. He specifically wanted 20 uh, 5W20 Kestrel. And it took two quarts to fill that one. And that oil, just two quarts of oil came to $18. $18 for two quarts of oil. And that was at uh, AutoZone. Wow, stuff is getting expensive. Crazy expensive. I'm going to see where this thing is on the dipstick on one quart. I don't want to overfill it and waste oil. have to suck it back out. Because too much oil is just as bad as not enough. And of course, it's not even touching the dipstick. After I pour oil in there, I like to let it set for a good minute. Let all that oil get off the sidewall of the filler tube. Because it will give you a false reading. On these Kawasaki's, the dealer told me to check the oil like this. Don't screw it all the way down. Because that would be a good 8th or 3 sixteenths on the dipstick difference. So you just check it like that. It's not even registered. So we'll pour more oil. Pour more. That's about two thirds of a quart. Let's see what the survey says after that. And it is right below the full. See, when you crank this thing for a few seconds, 20 seconds, and shut it off, it's going to fill that oil filter, and it's going to drop pretty good. So what I like to do is get a little, just a little more than it needs. Because you know it's going to drop the level oil. And I had a customer last night, late, right before the live stream. He was in a panic. He come by the house, he's got a Laser Z, I believe it is, or a Turfmaster, whatever it was. He's got the same exact engine. He's got a lot of wear and age on his. And this thing right here that the cord rubs on has worn down so much and it's gotten so sharp, it keeps tearing up his pull cord. And these don't have electric start. You break this and you're screwed in the field. Uh, so I had to call the dealership. On Amazon, just for this assembly, it's got four bolts, or three, four. Uh, $138 on Amazon, and at the local dealer, it's $133, so Amazon is not cheaper. 
anymore. And they have it in stock. You have to wait three or four days. They always run behind on their deliveries now. Not to knock Amazon. I still use them exclusively more than anybody else. But it ain't the same as it was. Yep, just a little over full. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to crank the damn thing up. I'm going to crank it up. All right, let's see. I don't like cranking things up on the table. But. All right, it's in neutral. Can you switch the zone? The dead man is, don't matter. Uh, the neutral is locked in. And the parking brake, let me check it. Parking brake is on. Oh, good. I know this is probably, got the, I got the camera tethered to the table, so it's probably going to shake like crazy. I'm going to give it very little throttle. I ain't going to choke it because I had it cranked earlier and it's probably already warm. Oh, here we go. That's all you want to run it right there. So I'm going to give it just a minute to settle. Give it a minute to settle. While I do that, I'm going to pull this cover off. I'm going to dig deeper into this thing and check it out. Well, that one back here is a stud. And these are nuts. see a little better if I can if it let me there we go and looking under it under the spindle where the blades bolt I see no grease fittings I see no grease fittings under here anywhere and I I really can't believe that I can't believe there's no grease fittings on these spindles I just found that hard to believe Good. There's no grease fitting on this pivot. Not even under it. Let me look under it. Just a head of a bolt. I don't see any grease fittings anywhere on this thing except for the front casters. Oh, that ain't good. There's no grease fittings on this idler pulley for the drive belt. Look under there, real good. Yeah, there's no grease head anywhere on this thing. Huh. Well, shit. Let me put this plate back on there. This is very easy to get on and off. I like that. I can't tell you how many tractors come in here with these plates all bent up and missing and missing hardware. And I just took this plate off my tour row, walked behind, I don't even have it no more, I threw it in the garbage. Threw it in the garbage. Check the hole now that I had a chance to set it down a little bit. Do rag. Oh, let me move the camera back around there. Let's see, can y'all see that? There we go.
That is. That'll, when you check your oil, don't do that right there because then you know that's kind of crazy. It'll run down your dipstick. And so I like to just kind of hold it like that. And I'm going to put a tad, a little bit of tad more in it. And there's just very little bit left in this bottle. Might as well go ahead and put the rest of it in there. Yep, look at there. It's empty now. So this thing holds exactly two quarts. 20 W50 Kawasaki's brand k -Tech. Synthetic blend. Contains zinc. Well, that's good. That is good. Okay. Now we've got the oil change. Got the new oil filter. Let's check this air filter. I don't care for that. I've seen Briggs models with something similar to that and they break if you ain't careful. You got somebody running your equipment and they don't care about it. They break it. Look at that air filter. It's not even on there. Look at there. Look at that. It wasn't even on there. Huh. I'm just going to take and blow this thing off real good. Like I said, this thing ain't got but 12 hours on it, so this filter probably ain't going to be dirty very much. I like to blow it from the inside out. Oh yeah, that's something dirty. Oh yeah. We ain't had no rain in a couple of weeks here. Everything's dry. The air compressor turned off and it run out of air. I know, Tom, you're blowing the damn dust all over the tractor. Well, I'm going to wash it. So. Help, 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 help. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It don't matter how it goes. As long as it goes. Get in there. Let's need a little more. Well, maybe it does matter. No, it don't matter. Get in there. Loosen a little more. There, there, there. Look at there. I can imagine over time this band wearing out. All right. And this cover will hold it down. You can see under this filter in the bodywork, it's tilted for this thing to actually lay just like that, tilted. And let's see, that one's locked. That one's locked. All right, oil change, air filter clean. All right, I'm gonna pause this thing and I'm gonna get it up on jack stands and get the blades off, give it some grease on the front casters. Let's sharpen some blades on this thing, boys. Sharpen some blades. I'll see under there real good. Half ass, you can see. Ah, oh, you got two bolts. One for each blade. It's a, it's a 15 16 headed bolt. Turn it up, push it on. your flat washer and your spring washer. Bolt. 
Oh boy. While I got this thing up, I'm going to grease the wheels. One on each wheel, and you got one on each spindle. Let me reach over here and grab my grease gun without hitting the camera. I ain't out of grease. Grease, I must be out of grease in my gun. There it goes. There it is. There it is. It probably wasn't greased at the dealership. There it goes. Twenty-two squirts of grease in that thing. That son of a gun was dry, boy. Good grief. All right, let me hit pause there and we'll sharpen some blades. Moved the place where I sharpen my blades. I used to sharpen it in front of the garage there, but I'm trying to be a little, a little better to my neighbors. I don't want to give them any reason to get mad at me for making so much noise. This is awful damn loud. All right, let's sharpen these blades. I just use a regular four and a half inch hand angle grinder. Uh, I mounted this vice out here on the other side of the other side of the garage where I ain't got nobody to see me or hear me or hear me screaming. Uh, let's see, let me move this camera back a little bit. Let's see. Find a good place to put this. Find a good place to put this. There goes the blade. Let's see, that ain't gonna work. I'm gonna have to move you over a little camera. You're gonna have to watch from out there, boy. Make sure you always wear your eye and ear protection.
Well, I'd say that is a fine edge right there. Somebody super chat Shane, so he'll buy me a blade sharpener like his. is. I'd be done by now if I did. That's a fine edge. You get you get it, David. Fine edge, finest of edges. Oh. I ain't gonna make y'all watch me sharpen the second one. Cause it's awful boring. It had one good nick in it right there. I did nothing more than just shine it up, and I got the twelve hours on it. That's not not too bad. Not too bad. Let me hit pause, guys, and I'll do the second one myself. Are nice and sharp. Not not too awful bad, not bad by by hand, so it didn't take just maybe five minutes to do that. Hmm. I would put a little anti-seize on these bolts, but they'll probably be taken off and put on a lot, so I don't believe it's necessary. Some wrap around that spindle already. Oh, let me look up my air, I'm gonna turn this air compressor on. of the two blades the, the best looking blade and I always put it right where the chute is because a customer is going to walk up open the chute and go yeah that's a pretty blade that's a good job sir. a little trick for you yeah, trick. if one of them's got a nasty gash or something in it you don't want to grind it to nothing put it on this side and put the nicer one on that side he'll see that side yeah. Whew. is sharpening the blades, greasing it, oil change through the air filter. Oh, what else could we do to it? Alright. And one more thing we're going to do to this is we are going to put a brand new Velky on it. That's a, it's a right brand Velky. We're going to put it together and we are going to install it on the back of this bad boy. Yeah, we're going to put it right there on the back of that thing. That's the last thing we need to do to this except wash it real good for him. Of course, check his tire pressure. Uh, 12 pounds 
and the back tires that's what it recommends and of course the front tires are solid which is really good how do y'all hang loose <laughs>